we continue with the part three of our video. This is the third and final video of our three part series Reasons to Walk the Good Works Strategy God. In this video, part three of Reasons to Walk the Good Works in Gratitude God, we shall bring everything together as we discern the remaining two reasons in our discussion to walk the good works with gratitude to God. We shall examine examples of good works. We shall also speak about the alarm about imposter, false gospel, the right attitude towards God, which all this will form part of the discussion. And as you be expected, Holy Scripture, our God. And so, God makes us to understand we are God's workmanship. Remember Romans chapter 3 verse 23 makes us to understand all fell short of God's standard. So it is important to remember that all without exception were under condemnation awaiting the wrath of God to fall upon the ungodly. For all have sinned come short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3. 3. And we are, the we are the consequences of failing short of the state of God, God. Yes, we are to face that consequence for the wages of sin, death. As descendants of Adam, all humans, including the earth, are desperately braved and dead in trespasses and sin. Just to one. For rather than visiting his wrath on all the guilty, God chose to save some. For the gift of God is eternal life, Christ our Lord. Romans 6, here to John. But, but by the grace of Christ, they and others saved by, the God, by God are spiritually renewed and become new nations. So, the work of God stands to But every believer in Christ is in a special or peculiar way the work of God. That we are his workmanship does not refer to the ordinary creation by which human beings are created through natural paths. Rather, it refers to the creation by which believers are declared to be righteous. Yes. Because not by their own power, but by the Spirit of Christ, they have been formed. They have been formed to righteous. Second Corinthians five. Again, this refers to non-body believers in Christ. Believers in Christ are the workmanship of God because they have been created in Christ Jesus. This is a work only God do. Everything in the believers then that is a supernatural gift of God. Hence we are his work because we have been created, not in Adam, but in Christ Jesus. And not to every kind of life, but to good works, which God had before ordained that we should work in them. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. The purpose of the workmanship of God. Ephesians 10. Ephesians 2 10. The purpose of God in creating believers as his workmanship is so that believers will walk in the works. Not just any good works, but the good works God has created for them to walk in. The workmanship of God, of the believer in salvation, is not achieved by good works, but is to result in them doing works. Again, Titus 2.14 and Titus 3.8 Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, 
and purify unto himself a peculiar people, filius of good works. This is a faithful saying, and these things are we that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. Walk in them, not to walk on them. The purpose of this works is that that had been prepared beforehand is not to walk in them, but to walk in them. This is quite a significant difference. This is to say God has prepared a path of good works for believers in Christ, which he will perform in and through them as they walk in faith. Believers in Christ are to walk in these good works as a lifestyle, as their way of life. This is not doing work for God, rather it is God performing his work in and through the believer. Philippians, hence the believers are the workmanship of God in whom and through whom God performs good works. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of pleasure. Philippians 2. When you, the believer, walks in the good works God has created for you, your light will so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify God, your Father, glorify your Father, which Matthew 5.16 So, compare your answer to the question, what are these good works? In the part 2 video, this. Examples of these good works. Not just any work, but the specific good works which God, their creator, has determined for them. This speaks of God's plan for his children. We are told that the gift of the Holy Spirit is according to what we are called to do by God. And so, for example, we see King Josiah of Judah carried out the religious reforms that were preordained and assigned to him by God long before he was born. Again, please reflect on these passages of Holy First Kings chapter 13, verse 2. Second Kings. Chapter 22, verses 1 to 2. Second Kings, chapter 23, verses 1 to 17, especially verses 17. Jeremiah was assigned his work while still in mother's womb. Jeremiah 1, verses 4 to 5. Apostle Paul was separated for the work of the Lord while still in the womb. Galatians 1, verse 10. Docas was full of good works. Acts 9, verse 36. We need to be aware of the errors of false teachers and their false gospel. Through the word, word of God, God says repeatedly that God saved by grace. Through faith alone. Ephesians 2, 9. There are many who reject the teaching of Holy Scripture. Such ones claiming that the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is not enough for salvation. They insist that some other things must be added for the blood of Jesus to be sufficient for salvation. Examples of this include the circumcision group during the time of the apostles. As we read in Acts chapter 15, verse 1, Galatians 2, 11, 14. During the time of the apostles, the early days of the church was its circumcision group. They were also called Judaizers as they wanted the church of Christ to be in the mold of Judaism. The Judaizers insisted that circumcision and other Jewish rituals must be added for someone to be saved. In our day, we have the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormon. They add works. They insist that their works are meritorious. 
I make up for the shortfall lacking in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That is, they earn their salvation by adding their works. They claim no one can be saved by grace alone, through faith alone. So please, be aware that all false gospels are the works. So grace as a means of salvation. And as the Holy Scripture command, run away from this false teaching and their false gospel. Be aware of this. Who claim to know what God's plan for you, for you is? They will usually claim that God has hidden his plan for your life from you but has revealed it to them. Beware of these merchandisers of the word of God and run away from them. Again, remember, you contributed nothing to your own salvation. Yes, nothing contributed by any human being, saved by God through Christ. I'm aware, and we're all aware, that human beings want to be praised. They want praise. Yes, proud human beings want to be seen to have done something. They desire to be commended. Hence, many try to bring works or other things in as contributing to their salvation. Remember again, all were dead in trespasses and sin, disobedient, with, with no exception. Ephesians 2, verses 1 to 3 and verse 5. And Ephesians 2, 1 to 7, gives some details of the state of the unbelievers in their unbelief and what God had done. It is from the rank of these unbelievers that believers have been taken by God. Again, we read the details of this in the part one of these videos. And so it's important for us to recognize that with all of this, despite deserving death, God offered mercy. Yes, God offered mercy in place of for us. It's what we read in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 to 10. Remember, all deserve condemnation, not praise. So one cannot say this frequently enough. Since by grace we are saved, and we are his workmanship, we have no remaining works by which we inherit salvation. This is because all the good works which we possess are the fruit of regeneration, as the works themselves are part of grace, as they were prepared beforehand by God. For God chose to save you. God saved you by grace through faith. Neither grace nor faith came from you but from God. That is, God chose to save you and provided the means by which to be saved. He saved you in Christ as he made you his masterpiece when he created you as a new creature in Christ at salvation. God then wants you to walk in the good works he had prepared for you in advance before you were. Hence, you, a rebel, was snatched, was saved by God when you, you have faced his wrath. He created you newly in Christ as his masterpiece. You, God's masterpiece, is then to walk in the good works. God had prepared in advance for you before he created you. Thus, in all this, you contributed nothing. You did nothing deserve to deserve any of this. For God did them for you out of his mercy. However, the word of God is quite emphatic. The salvation of anyone is wholly, completely, entirely the work of in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 10. So, no one, including you, boast. Romans 3, 27, 1 Corinthians 1, 29. Therefore, no flesh, that is, no human being, can and should boast in the presence of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 29. Since no one can obtain salvation by his own effort, no one can boast. In Romans 3.27 and 1 Corinthians 
form keeps with like a broken record as they say so if you must boast yes and should you want to boast then like other believers your boasting can only be first corinthians 1 31 second corinthians 10 17 compare this to jeremiah 9 23 to 24 that according as it is written he that glorious let him glory first corinthians 1 for he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Second Corinthians. And then in more detail. Thus said the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his way. Neither let the mighty man glory in it. Let not the rich man glory in it. For let him that glorieth glory in it. That he understandeth and knoweth me. That I am the Lord, which excites loving kindness. Judgment and righteousness. Yes. For in these things, I yes, Lord. I hope you recognize that that passage of scripture, Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24, mentioned a few that human beings are prone to boast about. And God says those are not what to boast about. And so, recognize this food. Again, we were talking about three reasons three reasons and those three reasons are really massive yes it sounds surprising that they are believers in reason they should be grateful for what might explain but it is true that such ones exist within the church they feel that god should earn their attitude to such ones and indeed to all there are three massive reasons to work the good works, the gratitude to God. Yes, if you are seeking reason to be always grateful to God, from a heart filled with gratitude, here are three massive reasons for gratitude. Remember this? A criminal on death row awaiting execution. Yes, a rebel on the way to destruction. To a rebel heading towards destruction as you await the wrath of God, which serves. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, verse 5. You were like a condemned criminal on death row awaiting a secret. This truth to yourself, oh. and suddenly and miraculously, a pardon your name came out of nowhere. God offered you this offer. Ephesians 2, 4 to 10. God's mercy manifests thus. But rather than destroying you, God goes to keep you from the hell, to save you, not because of anything you have done. So the first massive reason God saved you, the most expensive way to him yes the sacrifice of his only begotten christ by grace it Ephesians 2 8 to i hope you understand that the first massive reason is that god saved you most expensive way to himself that is the sacrifice of his only begotten jesus christ by grace as the first massive reason. The second massive reason in the process of saving you, God made you to his workmanship or masterpiece. When he created you as a new creature in Christ. Second Corinthians 5 17. Ephesians 2. And the third massive reason. Before he created you as his workmanship, God prepared good works in advance for you to in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. So after creating you in Christ, you are then shown his good works which you are to work in. There are many more 
massive risk. For example, God provided all you need to work in this box. That is the plan of God for your that is the plan of God for your life was put in place by God before you were created. But these three we do for now. So please do not be one of the imposters. There are many people claiming credit for what they have not done. They claim to be working for God. They claim great credit falsely. That makes them that, that's what makes them imposters and fraudsters as they claim credit for what God has what God does. Again, remember God's word, Ephesians 2 1 to 10. God says, whatever you are genuinely doing for him are the things he prepared for you. I created you to walk in those good works. That he is the one causing you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That when you are finished doing what he has asked you, you should neither congratulate nor ascribe rewards to yourself. Rather, you should see yourself as an unprofitable servant who has just done his and be grateful and thankful to God for the opportunity to be of service to him. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants, we have done that which was our due. Luke chapter 17 verse 10. These are unpalatable things for proud human beings because they are very nice and eager in congratulating themselves for the good things they are doing for the Lord. God is not under obligation to you for everything you have, including your life. He has freely given to you. Yes, they comfortably be contrary to God. Remember again the imposters? They comfortably speak contrary to God. But there are those who insist on the opposite. They claim to have special anointing and powers. That God cannot do anything without them or without their permission. They just tell God what to do. Again, remember, they, they are claiming to be pro they claim that God owns them, that they are doing good. They are doing God a favor by doing anything. They say God so appreciates the favor they are showing to him by serving him that he showers them with the abundant material blessing. Because they are doing these things, they become proud and full of themselves. Many give themselves big titles and look down on others. They are aptly described thus, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, perversiousness, maliciousness, full of envy, order, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. That's Romans chapter 1, verses 29. Many of these are claiming they are contending for God, while they are contending for their lost driven by covetous greed. Yes, recognize this. They are spending much time and resources singing their own praises, putting up signposts that eulogize and point to themselves than to anything having to do with the gospel. From such ones, please run away. Run away from them. Saved created a new creation in Christ to walk in the good works prepared in advice, in advance to walk by God. 
Yes. The receiving sinner deserves death. The receiving sinner deserves death as a penalty for his for God. For God decided to forgive and offer the gift of faith that leads to repentance and to salvation. Hence, rather than boasting, the believer should be with a humble heart of gratitude, be thankful to God for this unmerited gift. This has been the attitude of the Spirit of the Spirit by which true saints of God walked with, the, with God through the ages. Remember, God wants you to shine. It might sound surprising to you, but God wants his children to succeed and to shine what he has called them to. God made adequate preparation for your success. Therefore, God offered them mercy, place of wrath, by saving them by grace through faith. God prepared them properly as his workman. God prepared the good works his children are to work in in advance before he created them. God provided all his children required to succeed in what he has called them to do. The good work starts with us as believers. We are first and foremost the good works of God. His workmanship the new creatures in Christ. He then goes further to assign each believer a set of good works to walk in. So please, walk in not to be saved. Yes, notice that the believer is not doing good works to get saved. The believer is not doing good works so that he can make up for any shortfall in his salvation. Rather, the believer is doing and should be doing good works because he has been saved and God has beforehand determined for him what good works do. So as a child of God, the believer then engages in the assignment prepared for him by God. The believer does good works because he has been saved, not so he can be saved. The good works are the practical and visible demonstrations of our faith before our fellow human beings. They are so important that God prepared them for us before we were born. Again, God commanded us to shine. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6, Titus 2 14, 1 Timothy 6 8, Titus 3 8. Further, yes, we are commanded. To let our light so shine before men, so they can see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 6. And further still, Lucas was full of good works that everyone in her environment benefited from her light. Acts 9, 36. Christ purified the believers as a special people unto himself, dealers for good works. Titus 2. The believer is to be rich in good works. 1 Timothy 16. The believer is to be careful to maintain good works. Titus 3 8. Believers are to provoke one another unto love and good works. Hebrews 10 24. And so, the right attitude was God. You have been saved by grace through faith, and that not of yourself. You did not deserve it, but God chose to be If you are a believer in Christ Jesus, you are God's handiwork, his masterpiece, the sheep of his pasture. God has created you for his own glory and pleasure. He determined the good works you for him before you were born. He has made provision for all that you to succeed in the good works. God will only be pleased if you do the works for which he has created you. Yes, you can do the good works which God wants to work in if you follow his spirit through the instruments of the revealed will in Holy Script. It is doing these good works that you please God and serve your fellow Yes, that's the way to please God. 
for your work to honor God, you must be doing what he has created you to do. It is in doing the good work God has prepared for you to his satisfaction that he considers a success. Yes. And it is the opinion of God that matters, not the opinion of fallible. Yes. Again, remember that. It is doing the good works God has prepared for you to his satisfaction that he considers success. And it is the opinion of God that matters, not the opinions of fallible. It is to God that you own everything. You should therefore be full of gratitude, as there is nothing you have, you have that has not been given to you really by God. As you walk in the works God has prepared in advance for you, be full of praise from a grateful heart. Rather than focusing on what you lack, things desire but not here, not but do not have, things you desire but you you do not have here, keep thanking God for what He has done for you, and He. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not wisdom, is real. Not that, not that the spirits are subject unto you, or rather rejoice because your name are written in heaven. Luke chapter 10. So, remember again, always, the three massive reasons Walk the good works, gratitude to God. Uh, why waiting in your rebellion for wrath, for the wrath of God, like a condemned criminal on death row? God offered you mercy by saving you by grace through faith, and that not as a first. Then. He created you as his for commandship. So remember, God offered you mercy by saving you by grace. And that is not of you. So, saved you by grace through. So my, I'm Ephesians 2. Created you for command Christ. Yes. You are God's workman. And God prepare ready for you in advance the good works. But to work. And in addition, He has given you all you need to succeed in the works. He did all this out of the grace and favor. Yes, out of His grace and favor. You ought to be grateful from a heart filled with gratitude all the time for all the great things God has done. I hope you agree and you will reflect on all this and from henceforth you will serve God with a heart filled with Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for saving us by your grace. Through faith. We are grateful that you have fashioned us as your workman, Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ, your Son. Grant us the grace to walk in the good works which you have prepared ready for us. Grant that we may not transfer to others or ourselves the glory due to you. And as we are daily admonished by your word and even reproved, grant that we may not with hardness of heart resist or render ourselves pliable to you, that we may serve you with true meekness as we follow in obedience to your word, that we shall be helped to put off all remains of our error, and we shall continue to enjoy the light you have shown us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please, if you are not yet a believer in Christ, understand that only believers in Christ have been addressed thus far in this video. But you can become a doctor into the family of God, for God is aware of your existence. But then, you have to agree with God's verdict on human beings. God says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, that includes you watching this video. And the wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 3. And please, understand, you cannot save yourself. No human being is able to save himself or herself from the slave market of sin. For God being aware, even in your sinful state has made provision. And he continues to demonstrate his love for you. Let's read two passages of Holy Scripture. For God so demonstrated, for God demonstrated his love, his own love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's Romans 5 8. In other words, while we remain sinners, God brought to be to allow his son to die for us. And why did he do this? For, because he loves us. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes and not perish or have eternal life. John 3. And so we are then told what to do to become a child of God, to be saved. If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, saved. I hope you understand that. To be, you confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart. Yes, you confess your that Jesus is Lord. You believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Okay? Saved. How is that so? Or with the heart, a person be resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth, verses resulting in salvation. And so, it is with your heart that you believe. And then with your mouth, you confess what you believe in your heart. And the invitation is for, for whoever calls on the name of the to be saved. Romans 10. So you've heard now. Perhaps before this, you were saying you did not hear. Transport, you are no more ignorant of the gospel. You have heard, and I'm just praying that we make the right decision concerning what you have heard thus far. Please understand, it is the Lord Jesus Christ who is calling you. So hear his voice, and as you hear his call, please call now. Jesus calls you and says to you now, Come to me, all who are weary, and all who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my body is light. That's Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30. Please, I'm pleading with you. Understand a Christless life, a crisis filled, hell heading life, on a breakless but fast moving vehicle. Please, you need to get out of that vehicle. For it is too late and it crashes headlong. Oh, I pray may the Lord accept you to his kingdom. As you appropriate the finished sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, Jesus' name.